This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com So we want to speak out an uh, Indian which is relevant to the Yomtif that um, approaches Havalena Lataiva. If you look in Parshas Emar, after all, the Parsha in the Torah that talks about the Mayadim is Parshas Emar. And in Parshas Emar it speaks about all the Yomim Taivim. It says, Mayade Hashem Asher Tikru'u Aysam Mikra'i Kaidash. And it starts off by talking about Pesach, and it tells you you don't do Malacha on Pesach, and you eat Matzah on Pesach. And then it talks about Shavuos, and it talks about bringing the Bikurim on Shavuos. And then it talks about Rosh Hashanah, and it says Rosh Hashanah Zichrein Shrua, you build a Shoifar. Then it talks about Yom Kippur, and it says on Yom Kippur is, V'inisem Esnafshay Seichem. And interestingly, when it comes to the Yom Tif of Sukkot, we encounter something very unusual. And that is in Parak Chav Gimel, Pasuk Lamed Gimel, where the Indian starts. It says, Vayidabar Hashem HaMosh Aleymar, Dabar Ol Bnei Yisrael, Lachamish Asar Yom, Lachodesh Hashvi Azeh, Chag HaSukkot, Shivas Yom Lashem, Bayom HaRisha, and Mikro Kodesh, on the first day is a holy convocation, and... Shivas Yom and Tkiv Isha Hashem, bring Karbanos for seven days. And the eighth day is Mikro Kodesh, and you bring Karbanos. And then, Eile Moyadei Hashem Asher Tikro Yisam Mikro Kodesh. It seems to conclude with the Yom Tif of Sukkot. No mention of sitting in the Sukkah. Doesn't say sit in the Sukkah. No mention of Dalad Minim. Doesn't say to take Dalad Minim. Very interesting. All it says is the first day you don't do Malacha, the eighth day you don't do Malacha, and you bring Karbanos. And for some odd reason, the Torah seems to have forgotten to tell us anything about the mitzvahs of Sukkot. By Pesach it tells you to eat matzah, by Shavuos it tells you to bring Bikurim, by Rosh Hashanah it tells you to blow Shoifer, by Yom Kippur it says to fast. And it doesn't say what to do on Sukkot. And then it says, Eilam Oyadei Hashem in Pasuk Lamed Zayin. And then in Pasuk Lamed Tes, oh, we forgot! Ach b'chamish asayim l'chashashvi, but on the 15th day... Chag Hashem, it's a Yom Tif, Shiva Asyomim, seven days, by Yom Arishan Shabbat Sain, the first day you don't do Malacha, Ovi Yom Ashmini Shabbat Sain, the eighth day you don't do Malacha, wait a second, we just, you just told me that, seven Sukkim earlier, and then it says, oh, I forgot to tell you, Ula Kachtem Lachem by Yom Arishan, you should take on the first day, Priyetz Hadar, Kapois Tamarim, Anaf Eitz Avois, Varvei Nochal, take the Dalad Minim, Usmachtem, Lachnei Hashem Lekechem, Shiva Asyomim, you should be happy, by the way, make sure you're happy on Sukkot. If you don't try hard, you're going to be sad. Seriously. Mm-hmm. Whenever Sukkot comes, all of a sudden I feel, for some reason I start feeling sad. Why? The Yitzhahara. The rest of the year, he doesn't care if you're happy or sad. You have to fight the Yitzhahara. You have to be happy on Sukkot. Oh, as soon as Sukkot comes, the Yitzhahara, all of a sudden you're going to have, start thinking of a million reasons to be sad. Why? Because the Yitzhahara, he doesn't want you to be happy. The rest of the year he could care less. You're happy, you're sad. But all of a sudden Sukkot comes. It's like every Yom Kippur. You ever see every Yom Kippur? All of a sudden you're not hungry. No, I'm not in the mood of eating every Yom Kippur. Yeah, I'll eat later. I'll skip breakfast this morning. No. The one day you have to eat, the Yitzhahar makes you not hungry. Yeah, that's how it is. But here by the Yom Tif of Sukkot, all of a sudden the Torah, in the beginning, it doesn't say a word about any of the mitzvahs. It just says, don't do malach on day one and day eight. And then it seems to conclude with Eilem Moya De Hashem. And then it like, oh, I forgot. By the way, on the 15th day of the seventh month, you should not do malach on the first day and the eighth day. And you should, you should take the Dalad Minim. And Basukos Teishvu Shavas Yomim. Sit in the sukkah. We forgot to tell you, you got to sit in the sukkah for seven days. Laman Yedu Doro Sechem. So it's very odd that first, when the Torah introduces the Yom Tov of Sukkot, it doesn't say a word about any of the mitzvahs. Then it seems to conclude, Eile Moyadei Hashem. And then it says, oh, by the way, on the seventh month, on the fifteenth day, you shouldn't do Malach on day one and day eight. Hey, you already told me that. And then it sort of tells me and reminds us about the mitzvahs of Sukkot. So how do we explain these anomalies about the way the Torah refers to the Yom Tov of Sukkot? Also, let us contrast for a moment the first time it tells me the date of Sukkot and the second time. The first time is in Pasuk Lamed Dalet. It says, The seventh month, this one. And then in Pasuk Lamed Tes, 
when it goes back to tell me the date of Sukkot, it says, Ach, Bachamisha also Yom Lachoidesh, Hashvi, the seventh month. But it does not say, Hazeh, this one. So, how do we account for all of these discrepancies and the unusual details about the way the Yom Tov of Sukkot is written? Now, the answer to this question, I once heard in the name of the Sefer, the name of the Sefer is Imre Chain. But on the sheet here, we have it from the Sefer, Oyer Torah of the Goyin and the Darshan Rav Menachem Tzvi Taksin, which is quoted in the Sefer Kamoitse Shalorav on Sukkot. But uh, I believe the Sefer Imrei Chain also says this idea. Who's Nakamber? Um, of the Imrei Chain? The Imrei Chain is a Sefer of Brisker Torah. Different, um, okay. So, they offer the following answer. And that is a great chidosh. That why do we sit in the sukkah? We sit in the sukkah to commemorate that when we were in the, traveling through the desert, we were unprotected, and God sent us special clouds of glory, Anani HaKavayt. In fact, there's a special halacha, besides the fact that whenever you do a mitzvah, you should think, I am now having in mind to fulfill this and this mitzvah. Whenever you put on tefillin, you have in mind, I have kavanah to be kind of the mitzvah of tefillin, I have kavanah to be kind of the mitzvah of tzitzis, I have kavanah to be kind of the mitzvah of Talmud. When you're sitting here, even if you don't understand what we're doing, you should think, I have kavanah to be in the mitzvah of learning Torah. Okay? But besides that, there's another kavanah to have by sukkahs, and that is, Laman yedu dairei seichem ki basukos hoishat yisbenei Yisrael v'haitzi oisam meyaretz mosem. We sit in the sukkah to commemorate that God protected us with clouds of glory. Here's the big question. When they were in the Midbar for those 40 years, on the 15th day of Tishrei, did they sit in the sukkah or did they not sit in the sukkah? So you say, of course they sat in the sukkah. God gave them the Torah and He told them on the 15th day of the 7th month you have to sit in the sukkah. But if the whole purpose of the mitzvah is to commemorate the fact that we had clouds of glory, why would you commemorate clouds of glory when you have the clouds of glory? You commemorate something when you don't have it anymore. Right? But when you have it, there's no reason to commemorate it. Right? So maybe you can make the case that when they were in the desert, for those 40 years, they didn't sit in sukkahs on sukkah, on sukkahs. They had clouds of glory. They, they, there was no... What, you think they actually went ahead and they banged wood together and they sat in sukkahs? To do what? To remember the clouds of glory? Nothing to remember. You have it over your head. So maybe they didn't sit in sukkahs when they were in the desert. And maybe... Did they take Dalad Minim in the desert? Did they take the four species in the desert? So of course they did. They wore tefillin. They dam in chakras. They ate gefilte fish on Shabbos. They did all the important Jewish rituals. So then, they probably took the four species. Well, maybe not. Because by the four species it says, Be'os bechem es tvuas ha'aretz. When you gather the, the grain of the land, they didn't make it. And no grain in the they had no, they had no grain. They had no land. They didn't enter Eretz Yisrael yet. They didn't have a land to take the Dalad Minim from. So maybe you could make the case. They didn't take, they didn't send the sukkah in the desert. And they didn't take the four species in the desert. If you suggest this chidosh, then the desert, they didn't send the sukkah. And they didn't take the Dalad Minim. Not until they entered Eretz Yisrael did they send the sukkah and they take the Dalad Minim. We understand beautifully the language of the way the Yom Tif of Sukkot is written in the Torah. Vayedaber Hashem HaMoshalem HaShem spoke to Moses. Daber El Bnei Yisrael speak to the Israelites. Bechamisha Asar Yom on the 15th day Lachoydesh Hashvi of the 7th month Hazeh! This year! This period! In the desert! So in the desert I don't have to tell you anything about the Yom Tif of Sukkot because you're not sitting in the Sukkah and you're not taking the Dalad Minim. The only thing you have to know is on the first day, you don't do Malacha. Totally. And on the eighth day, you don't do Malacha. And you bring Karbanais. You don't need to know about sitting in a Sukkah. You're already sitting under an Aniyakavai. You don't need to know about taking Dalad Minim because you didn't enter Eretz Yisrael yet. But, Lamitas, and then it concludes, Eile Moyadei Hashem Hashem Shetugu Aisam Mekor. Ach, in Lamitas, Bechami Sha'asar Yom Lachoydash Hashvi. In general, in the seventh month, this is what you're talking about when you enter Eretz Yisrael. Now, be'os bechem es tfuas ha'aretz. And you gather the grain of the land. And you're going to gather in a lulav, and an esrog, and a dasim, and a ravos. 
Now you need to know when you get, when you enter the Holy Land, you need to take an Esrog, you need to take a Lulav, you need to take a Rava, you need to take Hadassim, and you need to send the Sukkah. So if you, if you offer this chedosh, if you suggest this chedosh, then we understand beautifully the breakup of the way the Yom of Sukkot was written. It's broken down into and That's why the Torah gives the date two times. The first date was given for when the Jews were in the desert. The second date is given for, for when the Jews are entering Eretz Yisrael. When they're in the desert, no mitzvah supply, except don't do malacha on day one, on day eight. When they enter Eretz Yisrael, that's when the mitzvahs kick in. It's a very beautiful way to read the d- details of the Pesach. Why don't they do it like Shabbos? It should be, it should be like Shabbos. What? Well, <coughs> Torah could have basically used the word it's Shabbos. It's not that. Shabbos. You'll have to cook. You'll have to carry. Uh-huh. But the tent alone was still Okay, or that. Even Bilem is so distinct. He says, my toy will have a yaga. That means... The, the, the okay. Oil was the okay, Shmuel is saying also a good point that according to the Manda Omar, Sukkah is Mamish, that the reason we sit in Sukkah is to commemorate the actual Sukkahs they sat yeah. in the Midbar. The they didn't have to make a Sukkah, they had it, they sat there the whole year. That's okay. what Bilem, Bilem looked at the, at the how the souls of the man. Yes. Oh, yeah, the oil oh. is a the good. Are yeah, yeah. Okay, so now the question is whether this explanation is correct. Is it even. Is it even legitimate to suggest such a thing that certain mitzvahs did not apply in the midbar? So the uh, a certain rav by the name of Rabbi Yisrael Valtz, who is the Rosh Av Bezin of Budapest, and then came to Yushalayim, he sent a letter to one of the Paiske Hadar, the Tzitz Eliezer, Chelak Zayin, Simon Lamin Aleph, and um, he brings down the fact that this explanation that we just said from the Sefer Art Torah was printed in a um, Torah journal. Uh, the name of the journal is Tel Tal Piyos, in the Teves edition, Tafresh Peches. Tafresh Peches is 1928. And there it suggests this explanation. And the questioner asked, that says, Eliezer, what his opinion um, is about this explanation? Because Rav Valtz def- um, was very much uh, admired this explanation <laughs> to explain why the Torah begins by saying "bechamisha asar lachodesh hashvi hazeh," and then continues on to "bechamisha asar lachodesh hashvi." And there are um, some people who are ma'orer. Some people challenge this explanation, and they say you can't rely on it. How could you say that certain missiles did not apply in the midbar? And Rav Valtz wanted to defend this explanation by quoting the Rambam in the Morin Avuchim. We know the Rambam wrote many svarim. The Rambam wrote the Yad HaChazaka, which is the most well-known. The Rambam wrote a commentary on Mishnayis. And the Mor Nevuchim is from the most controversial works of the Rambam, the Guide to the Perplexed. The good thing about that guide is that there are a lot of customers, because there are a lot of people who are perplexed, right? But um, the Rambam says the following. The Rambam offers a reason for the Dalad Minim. Why did Hashem tell us to take the Dalad Minim? A yellow esrog, a nice tall green lulav, Hadas and Rav, what's the rationale behind the mitzvah? So the Maranavuchim says, look at number four in Chela Gimel, Parak Mem Gimel. The, the reason for the Dalad Minim, Shehi Simcha, the Sasain, it was to express happiness and joy, when they left the desert. The desert could, you could not plant there. There were no fruits there. There were no figs, grapes, pomegranates. There was no water to drink. And they enter Eretz Yisrael. Eretz Yisrael was like paradise. It was a land, a, lush, a luscious land. A land that flows with springs and waterfalls and fruits and rivers. And therefore, Hashem told us to take the most beautiful of all the fruits, the Esrog, and the most beautiful of all the leaves, which is the lulav, and the most beautiful and the most fragrant of all plants, which is the hadassim, and the most beautiful of all herbs and, and bushes, which is the aravos. And by taking these four species, which is the choicest of all of the various types of things that grow, it's an expression of joy that you're exiting basic 
you know, a basic Gehenim on this world, which was the Midbar, and you're entering Gan Eden, you're entering Eretz Yisrael. So taking the Dal Minim was an expression of thanks at Kodesh Baruch about entering Eretz Yisrael. That's the Rambam's explanation for the Dal Minim. So suggests Ravaltz, based on this Rambam, it's clear that the Dalad Minim only applied when they entered Eretz Yisrael, not when they were in the Midbar. Because the whole reason for Dalad Minim, the whole reason for Dalad Minim is, look now, now that we enter Eretz Yisrael, which is such a, um, a beautiful, luscious land, look what we're able to experience. We're able to experience the visual uh, benefits of the Esrog and the, the fragrance of the Hadassim and so forth. So from this Rambam, it would seem clear to support this explanation that in the Midbar, in fact, they did not take the Dalad Minim. And the Tzitz Eliezer says... That's right. I agree with you. The Rambam, it's as clear as day that the Dalad Minim were not applicable in the Midbar. They did not take Dalad Minim in the Midbar. The whole purpose of Dalad Minim is to show gratitude to Rav Hashem for entering Eretz Yisrael. And as Tzitzel Yezer says, let me bolster what, what your suggestion is by pointing out that look at number 6, the Menorah Hamar. Menorah Hamar was one of the earliest of the Musar Svarim. He quotes the Rambam in the Mar Nebuchim. Now, not every single comment of the Ram in the Marna uh stands and remains unchallenged. Many have challenged many of the comments of the Ram in the Marna Vuchim. But this particular comment of the Ram in the Marna Vuchim, the Menoira Samar, Rabbi Buhab, I believe, quotes it and he lauds it. He says, Baharab Hamoira, Gila, Besifroi, Hanichbad. The Menoira Samar writes that the great Rambam reveals in his beautiful Sefer the reason for this mitzvah. Kedei Lizkar, to remember that Hashem brought them from a place that nothing grows, it's like a dead land, to a land of paradise. So again, points out that Tzitzel Yezer, from the language of the Menar Samar, firstly that he quotes the Rambam. He lauds the explanation of the Rambam. And he says, it's gratitude that Hashem brought them to Eretz Yisrael. That, that shows that this mitzvah was not applicable in the Midbar and only began to kick in when they entered Eretz Yisrael. And then the Tzitzel Yezer says, to boot, I'm going to bring you two more proofs that the Dalad Minim were not applicable in the Midbar. One proof he cites from a Sefer that I don't have access to. The name of the Sefer is Tseido Ladarach, of Rabbi Nachim Zarach. But he also quotes the Abar Benel. Look at number eight, the Abar Benel. Don Yitzchak Abar Benel. Right? Who, by the way, was a direct descendant of David HaMelech. Abar Benel writes, he's direct descendant of David HaMelech. He says, Arve Nachal, why did Hashem command us to take Aravos? Because Hayoisam Gedelam Al Hamayim. Aravos need water to grow. And because there were no Aravos in Mitzrayim, the Koshikain, the Midbar, there were no Aravos in the Midbar. Nachal Mayim, Ayonus Ahoymos. There were no springs of water. Hashem commanded when we enter a land that flows with springs, you rejoice with the Aravais. So it comes out that the Abarbanel also was saying very clearly that the Dalit Minim were not applicable in the Midbar, which supports this explanation. That when Hashem gave us the mitzvah of Sukkot, it was Bachamisha, Asar Yom Bachodesh, Hashvi Hazeh. When you're in the midbar, I don't tell you anything about Dalad Minim. I don't tell you anything about sitting in the sukkah. But again, so far we saw a number of supports to this idea that in the midbar they did not take the four species. What about sukkahs? Did they have a mitzvah to sit in the sukkah in the midbar? Well, to that, the Tzitz Eliezer quotes a very beautiful sefer, sefer that is very close to my heart. The name of the sefer is Beis Elikim, the house of God. It was written by the Mabit, Rav Moshe Matrani. I had this chos that when I was in Eretz Yisrael, I went to the kever of Rav Moshe Matrani. The kever of Rav Moshe Matrani lies right next to the kever of the Arizal. And, and Rav Yosef Kar, right in Sfas. In the old cemetery of Sfas, you have um, the four kvarim right next to each other. You have the Arizal. And one of them is Rav Moshe Matrani, the Mabit. The Mabit. And the Mabit wants to know did they sit in Sukkot in the Midbar? Well, he says, you know what? They definitely did not eat chametz on Pesach in the Midbar. So, right? They didn't eat chametz. They, so they did not eat 
entomans, even if they had Chav Yisrael, Pas Yisrael entomans, they didn't eat it on the Midbar on Pesach. They need Chametz. And on Shavuos, they kept Shavuos in the Midbar. But, says the Beis Kim, look in the last paragraph in number 10, Vev, sure it's possible, Kigam Shechag HaMatzah Sashvuos Nagu Midbar, even though the Jewish people observed Pesach and Shavuos in the Midbar, Chag HaSukos, the festival of Sukkot, Le'inyan Yeshiva of Sukkah, Le'inagu. They didn't keep it. Why? Sharei hoyu mesuchachim ba'anani ha'kavod. They were surrounded by the Anani ha'kavod. Now he offers a little bit of a different reason than we suggested. We suggested, why do a mitzvah to commemorate the Anani ha'kavod if you have Anani ha'kavod? You don't commemorate something if the person's around, right? You don't need to remember me now. I'm here. I'm still here with you. And maybe two months, you know, you say, oh... <laughs> Rabbis are much better after they're not here anymore, right? While they're here, eh. when they're gone, oh, we had a rabbi, right? But, you know? Rabbi, you know what? People don't appreciate yeah. it when you have it. That, so, <laughs> so, so, from a distance, you know. But, but um, it's the same thing with Anani Yaakov. You don't need I to don't commemorate know. Anani Yaakov no, if, you have, if you have Anani Yaakov. But he gives a halachic reason. He says, wait a second, if I... The halacha is, in the beginning of sukkah, it's in, in Mishnah sukkah, Parak Aleph, Mishnah Beis. What's the halacha if you make a sukkah under a sukkah? It's possible. Yeah. Sukkah under sukkah is possible. Yeah. So if, if they were sitting under Anani Akavad, which was like a sukkah, and they made their own sukkah, then they're up the creek without a panel. There, it's a possible sukkah. It's a sukkah under a sukkah. Yeah, yeah, Th- then it would be possible, right? He says, That's why it says by Sukkot, The future generations should know, but not the present generations. Present generations don't need to remember, they see it with their own eyes. Okay? So, so says it to Yazar, not only have I brought you proof that the Arba Minim were not applicable in the Midbar, as the Ramam says, as the Abar Manel said, as the Abmanaras Hamar said, I'm also bringing you a source that they did not sit in Sukkot in the Midbar. But now, says the Tzitzel Yazar, I want to turn to one thing that Rabbi Valtz suggested, that maybe the, the reason why they did not observe Dalad Minim in the Midbar is because how are they supposed to get Dalad Minim in the Midbar? Now, some Hasidim would say that there's an ancient legend that Moshe Rabbeinu sent messengers to Italy. You obviously see clearly from here that they don't even entertain that possibility as legitimate in the, uh, in the realm of uh, Halacha. Because he says, that's not possible to say that they didn't take Dalad Minim in the Midbar because they couldn't get a hold of it. Why? Why is that not possible? He doesn't say, well, because everybody knows Moshe Rabbeinu sent messengers to Italy. That's not what he says. He says, there's a well-known Taisus. Taisus says uh, in Masech Tachulen that um, regarding, we know that, that uh, the Jewish people in the Midbar, they dyed various... Um, they do. They di- no, they, no, I don't mean died as, as opposed to living. I mean, in the dying process, oh, that Sevilla... The, to dye wool, to, to, to dye different cloth and dye um, um, material. So the question is, what do they dye it with? Certain dyes are natural, they grow naturally. Well, how could anything grow in the midbar? Nothing grew in the midbar. So the. You use that warm shamir. Right, so the shamir stone. No relation to Yitzchak, right? The shamir stone. The shamir is only blue, remember? What? The shamir, no, the shamir was used to cut the stone. No, like the chilaza, you mean the worm, to, yeah. the toilashan. It's only blue. Yeah. It's yeah. Only one color. So where do they get dye in the midbar? So Toysa says in Chulin the following. That Toysa, look at number 12. The Shema Oz, Kishabo, Sham Yisrael, Hayamat Smiach. That it's possible wherever the Jews traveled in the midbar, miraculously, the desert blossomed. So to say that they didn't take Dal and Minum in the midbar because they couldn't get a hold of it, that's uh, not a proof because there's a Medrash in Shirashirim on the Pasuk, Shalachayich. Pardes Rimoinim, that the Be'er would, the Be'er Miriam would cause all kinds of plants and, and saplings and growth to grow in the Midbar. The proof is, as soon as Miriam died, all of a sudden the Jews started complaining, not only they don't have water, 
They say, we don't have grapes, we don't have figs. What does that got to do with the Be'er Shal Miriam? So you see, so you see that the Be'er Shal Miriam caused different things to grow from them, and it could be it also caused the Sregim to grow for them. Yeah, but you wouldn't be able to use those things anyway. Why not? It's comes out, it comes out to be hectic, no? Well, so that's an old sugya, whether, you know, by Hanukkah, whether uh, miraculous oil could be used for Hanukkah. That's a big sugya. But... But apparently they did use it for. Um, and by the way, the Yalkut Shemoni says when the Jewish people came out of Mitzrayim, Hashem brought down the Mun and He brought down the Slav, and every Shevet made out of the Be'er their own river, and they would plant figs and Rimonim and Gefanim and apples. Now often it says Tapuchim. We know often in Shas Tapuach does not mean an apple. Tapuach in Shas means an esrog. Let's, let's say, for example, in the Gemara Tainus, it says that the Jewish people, it says, Kitapuach ba'atze hayar kein doidasi bein abonim. Actually, it's the Gemara Shabbos. The Gemara says the Jewish people are like the apple. The apple, the, the um, fruit grows before the leaf. All the other fruits, the leaf grows before the fruit. And Tainus says, not true. The apple, like any other fruit, the uh, leaf grows before the, the, the fruit. Tosa says tapuach doesn't mean apple. Tapuach means esrog. The esrog is the only fruit where the fruit grows before the leaf. Okay? So, so again, according to this medrash, possibly, they, they did have them in the midbar, or they may have gotten them from Ein Gedi, because there's a, um, not the Gedi gas station, Ein Gedi is a place in Eretz Yisrael. The Targum says in Shir Hashirim that they, uh, how do they bring libations in the Midbar? Where they get grapes from? The Targum says they got it from Ein Gedi. So, so too, maybe they got the Dalet Minim from Ein Gedi. But in any event, so to say they didn't have Dalet Minim because they couldn't get a hold of it, if there's a will, there's a way. A Yid could get a hold of an Esrig. If they could get a hold of an Esrig in, the, in concentration camps, then you could get a hold of it in the Midbar also. Right? They used to call it organizing. The thing is, the moisture of the man could be that certain spots actually it could grow something. Because sooner or later the man it melted, used to melt, and it would melt, but no matter even in the middle, you have some moisture. There. Right you can now, what the Israelis do now in the middle, it's yeah. unbelievable. It's right. only the moisture from the man after they say the sun went down. Everything melted, so so they had some moisture. The chama shemesh, hashemesh v'namis, right? Yeah, no, no. It, it, so so they had, it could be grown. Something. It could be it was grown, but there are sources that um, the mitzvah da'aminim only kicked in in the mid in the Eretz Yisrael because it was an expression of gratitude, like the Rambam says to be able to enter Eretz Yisrael, and they maybe did not sit in sukkahs in the midbar, and that would explain the breakup, why the Yom of Sukkot is broken up into two parts. The first part, Bachodesh Hashvi Hazeh, in the midbar, and no mention is mentioned. No, nothing is mentioned about the mitzvahs. And then it says the chamisha asriyam lachodesh, and only then it talks about the mitzvahs. And the mitzvahs are l'doyroi seichem for future generations. I wish everyone. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.